Economic inactivity is about 400,000 people higher than it was pre-pandemic. And that growth is now being driven primarily by rising ill health. Now, we need to dig in a bit more to see what kind of ill health, but some of the emerging analysis suggests that mental ill health is likely to be the key thing that's driving this. What I think the danger we're seeing at the moment is policies that are designed to combat the old problems we used to have in previous recessions. I don't think we've yet seen policy catch up to what you need to do to tackle inactivity. So older workers dropping out and ill health driving people out. And there are really two sides to this. So first is what kind of support services do people need to be enabled and supported and encouraged back into the labour market? And the employment support that is there is too focused on job centre work coach meetings and hassling people and that kind of pressure. And there is far, far too little of the kind of tailored personalised support, which is what really helps people who have difficulties with ill health, who have caring responsibilities, who have these kinds of issues, to get back into the labour market or to get the right job for them. The other side of this, though, is actually the jobs themselves. We need to look at how attractive some of these jobs are. And particularly at the bottom end of the labour market, you've got an awful lot of jobs which are low paid, which are very insecure, which are very inflexible from an employee point of view. So one thing we need to do is improve the quality of work at the bottom end of the labour market. We need to be taking this chance to redesign that labour market so it's actually fit for the next 20, 30, 40 years and will also help us get out of this looming cost of living crisis plus labour shortage crisis.